Hey, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome back to the Moonlight World. Oh, we got a challenge today. We're going to be building double habitats for red foxes and silver foxes, which in sandbox mode is quite a challenge. So if you've ever tried to breed the melanistic silver foxes in this game, you will know the pain that this is going to put me through. They are so rare, we're going to need to do a hell of a lot of breeding. Um, so I figured rather than just sort of throwing down a load of fences and just breeding for hours until I got them, it'd be cool to actually build some little sort of off-show breeding pens and actually have something that we can leave in the zoo when I'm finished breeding the foxes. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to build the smallest, cheapest habitat I've ever built. <laughs> Get the uh, silver foxes bred, and then we will move on to building the big, beautiful habitats that they're actually going to live in. So these cages are in between the raccoon habitat and the staff buildings near the entrance. And like I say, I want to leave them here when we're done. So there's a backstage, off-show area that you can glimpse from different places in the zoo sort of thing you sometimes see between habitats uh, when you go to the zoo. I thought that would be cool. Um, really enjoyed building a rectangle as well. <laughs> so much easier than the, uh, the stuff we normally build on the channel. I might just make all my habitats rectangular in future just to save time and do seven videos a week. <laughs> um, but don't worry, the, uh, the habitats that we're gonna build in a minute are a lot more complex. <laughs> but yeah, we've got loads of aluminium on here um, or corrugated iron, uh, whatever it is, and the mesh and just trying to make it look as basic and cheap and thrown together as possible. Uh, it's supposed to look like a holding pen really, where an animal would be in between being moved from one habitat to the other or something like that. And then I'm just gonna copy it across and get four habitats here. Um, and then join it up to the staff buildings and start trying to breed these silver foxes. Let's get some foxes in and then we'll get them on all four pens, start them breeding. Um, and wait till we get a silver fox. I'm sure it won't take too long. Yeah, okay, try like 50 years. <laughs> but there we go, a silver fox, they are so beautiful. I got so many of the black foxes, piebald, white foxes, but eventually I got a silver fox. So now we can start building the aviaries that they're actually gonna live in. So I had a vision for this habitat where, <laughs> a vision, <laughs> I sound like some sort of, um, evangelical preacher not that kind of vision uh like an idea for this habitat where um there'd be a a, a wide path like i built here with trees on either side like big evergreen trees and then the guests would have like glimpses of foxes on either side of the path almost like they were walking through a forest the other thing i thought of was having some mesh that was sort of curved away from the path with the uh, habitat behind it um, and that was really all I had when I started building. Normally I like to plan things out pretty um, extensively before I actually start building. So there's quite a lot of jumping around in this speed build as I sort of do a bit, look at it and think, yeah, that's good. And then later on look at it and think, no, that needs a bit more work. But um, what I'm doing here is getting the, the first part done, which is the curved mesh that's gonna be the front of the habitat. So you can see the two sort of wooden boxes on either side of the path. That's a rough size of what the habitats are gonna be. And then basically I'm just gonna build this habitat on this side, which is for the red foxes. And when I'm completely happy with that, I'm just gonna blueprint it and copy it across to the other side uh, and then tweak a few bits here and there to have the silver foxes in that one. So that there's uh, sort of two distinct populations. It's basically an aviary. It's quite common to keep um, cats and foxes, raccoons, anything that's pretty um, good at climbing and pretty good at escaping really. If you mesh over the whole habitat, then as long as you don't have any holes in it, uh, you're not gonna have any issues with escapes. I really like building aviaries. It's one of my favorite things to do in Planet Zoo. Hopefully one day, maybe in the next update, um, we'll have an opportunity to build lots more aviaries, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but um, anyway, back to this build. So um, I wanted it to look somewhat structurally sound as well. So as well as all the mesh, I'm gonna have some of these um, rusted metal poles from the Australia pack, which I really like um, in the back. And I'll keep on adding more and more of those until I feel like it would um, stand up, <laughs> always useful. And then we'll get some more of these cables on the side of it until it starts looking like um, a proper aviary. 
get more mesh in on the side always fun working with this stuff uh, but it looks pretty good uh, when it's done this one I like the way the mesh sort of curves around on these sides and then is um, curved towards the back as well and then any bits where the mesh is a bit overlapping and doesn't look too good we'll just put some foliage in front of it <laughs> classic way to hide anything in planet Z um, and yeah like this little bit here uh, probably could look a little bit better but nobody's gonna see that apart from you guys <laughs> so I'm quite happy to leave that as it is we'll copy this across to the other side and then get rid of all the sort of um, stuff in there to make it easier to build and then the other thing I'm gonna do is have the terrain raised from the path all the way to the back of the habitat um, just a classic zoo trick to make sure the animals are always visible and um, they get higher as they get further away from you and closer um, to the floor as they get uh, closer to you so there's always um, a good sight line foxes aren't the biggest of animals um, so I wanted them to have a decent sized habitat but obviously you also want the guests to see them especially in a nighttime zoo like this we'll put the trees in uh, that I mentioned and then we're gonna have a row of bushes as well to stop people from going beyond the path and uh, getting their fingers nipped off by a fox. There'll be a fence here, of course, as well. I'm just trying to get that sort of temperate North American forest vibe here with all these bushes. These pine trees are the same ones we used in the beavers episode. Uh, they look a lot like pine trees that actually grow in Singapore where the zoo is set. So it's not too much of a departure from the, the sort of native foliage that we've got going around the rest of the zoo. Get a few more of these poles in like i said before just trying to make sure it looks structurally sound uh, i've got the big concrete bases on as well um, and this is starting to look uh, like something i'm happy with really get a few more of these down here and i'll put a few more of the poles at the back as well then we're going to put in this shelter which i actually took from the raccoon habitat because i thought it would suit the fox habitat as well and it's just one that's going to sit right at the back of the habitat it's not something you're really supposed to notice but I thought would be cool would be if the foxes could actually climb on top of it obviously with the whole habitat being meshed over there's no worries about them escaping no matter how high they get so I thought allowing them to go on top of the habitat would be cool uh, next up we're going to put the barriers in so just going to run this all the way around and it's going to have like a, um, a sort of indent in it where that shelter is so that the keeper gate actually is at the front of the shelter um, so that the staff don't just sort of materialize through one of the door pieces they actually got a door to open and then I think with this one extra crossbeam I'm finally happy with the look of the aviary and it's onto the enrichment items so just put loads of enrichment around for the foxes I love the animation where they jump into the cardboard box uh, you saw that at the start of the video so loads of those about and I'm going to put a scent marker enrichment up on top of the shelter as well to give the foxes a reason to go up there you'll see that in the cinematics at the end and then I'm going to do loads of foliage work around the sides of the aviary just to really sort of sell the idea that this is in a temperate forest rather than um, in Singapore um, where the zoo itself is set and I'll keep doing that until I'm uh, until I'm happy with the way it looks uh, now I'm recording this on uh, Wednesday and we've got a special live stream tomorrow so I'm assuming that we are going to get the new DLC announcement on Friday and this video comes out on Saturday <laughs> so by the time you watch this you will know what the next DLC is I don't at this point in time personally I am really hoping that with the addition of the bats in the walkthrough Avery in the Twilight pack that maybe the time has finally come to add flying birds into Planet Zoo um, but I have absolutely no idea what Frontier have got planned so it could be something completely different who knows anyway now that the path is detailed it's time to blueprint the habitat and copy it across for the grey foxes uh, widen the path get the trees copied across make some little tweaks to the grey fox habitat and that is the sort of avenue of uh, foxes done let's check it out I really like how this looks put a little sign in there as well I'm going to leave you with the rest of these cinematics thank you so much for watching as always and I'll see you again very soon for some more Planet Z thanks for watching